Greetings, my name is Matthew Johnson. I am the pastor at Glencoe Nine Methodist Church, and I am glad that you are here joining us for our daily devotionals. Just as a quick reminder, we are on a new schedule. Our devotionals are no longer every day, but instead we're doing Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and that is because we have a Bible study starting on this Thursday on a book called Everything Happens for a Reason and Other Lies That I Have Loved by Kate Bowler. If you are interested in that, I am sending out emails today and tomorrow about that Bible study so that way we could go ahead and start figuring out the logistics of getting Zoom set up and so that way you can learn how to at least download and things of that nature. So please look out for that. If you have not signed up for it or, if, or anything like that, please, please let me know today so that way I can get the information to you. And if you are, in fact, signing up for it, please buy the book. And if you don't want to buy a physical book, they do have digital copies. And, the book, and we're going to be reading the first two chapters of the book, the the preface and the first chapter and it's going to be a five week long study where we do two chapters a week and we'll get through the entire book that way in a reasonable shorter amount of time but it's going to be a great opportunity for us to discuss some important details about our theology and, and what we believe as well as for us to grow in what it means to be in grief and to deal with loss and to deal with suffering and so I think that you will enjoy this course. I'm really looking forward to it. The book is an amazing book if you've not read it. It, it is a great opportunity to look into the eyes of those who deal with the prosperity gospel, which I feel like here in the South at least, we all have kind of embodied it a little bit and to think about how the implications of what the prosperity gospel is and what does it mean for us to say something is part of the prosperity gospel versus what is not and so it's going to be an interesting read nonetheless and it's going to be a great conversation so i really hope and pray that you are able to join us for this event anyways now that that's out of the way, let's go ahead and open up with our scripture for today, which comes from the Psalms, and it's Psalm 93, verses 1 through 5. Hear now the word of God. The Lord is king. He is robed in majesty. The Lord is robed. He is girded with strength. He has established the world. It shall never be moved. Your throne is established from of old, and you are from everlasting. The floods have lifted up, O Lord. The floods have lifted up their voice. The floods lift up their roaring. More majestic than the thunders of mighty waters. More majestic than the waves of the sea. Majestic on high is the Lord. Your decrees are very sure. Holiness befits your house, O Lord, forevermore. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Today's scripture, we have a talk about God ruling the world and the majesty that comes from that. And that's a beautiful, beautiful thought because if we think about it, God is in control. God is in charge of the world in some way or another. It's maybe how scripture says it, but maybe it's beyond what we can comprehend. Maybe it's beyond what the scripture says because scripture is not the end all be all. God is greater than a book that was divinely inspired. But when I read this, I think about my current situation as a citizen of the United States, as one who votes for presidents and elected officials, as one who thinks about how these elected officials are in charge of the country, of course, we as citizens and as people of the United States vote them in. They are running the country for us on our behalf. And I cannot help but think back into the scriptures and think about how we did not need a ruler. We did not need kings in this world. We did not need presidents and such because we had God. But the Israelites, God's people said, we need a king to help rule us. And so God granted that wish. And what happened? Some good things, but many bad things. These rulers, they were corrupt. They were not legitimate sometimes. There were many issues that have taken place. Some of them 
follow God's rule, follow God's law, followed what God was commanding, but then led astray and caused a lot of pain and suffering. The people strayed away from God because they focused more on human beings than they did God. They said humans are more important or better than God. By putting a king in place, they're saying God's not good enough. We need a king. God granted this thinking that we are going to get it. God granted this, and that's a miracle. But God is still in control even amidst all the things. Because when these rulers, when these kings screwed up, what did God do? He took them off the throne and put a new on. Or God punished for our misdeeds. During these times of very contentious politics and ideologies, while I have a different opinion than many others, while you have a different opinion than others, we must remember that God is king. God is in control of the world in some way. Maybe God is not controlling what individual things are happening in the world, i.e. natural disasters, tropical storms like the one that's coming out of Florida and up the East Coast now. Maybe not causing earthquakes and the, the, the viruses and illnesses in the world, not causing unnatural deaths and such. But God is in control of of our lives and what I mean by that is that God is trying to influence us and trying to help teach us and help us be faithful to God not as in literally control because there lies a problem if you if God is telling us and forcing us to do things then where is our own self worth where is the freedom of choice These are important aspects that we have to consider. But during this time of contention about how we're handling the coronavirus, about how we handle any kind of situation or any kind of issue in politics, we must remember that no matter who we vote into office, no matter what we agree or disagree with with our elected political officials, that God is in control, and that God stands above all of them. We can't relate these elected officials to God because that is false. That's called idolization. We don't want to idolize people. We want to worship God and not people. But if we can remember, and I firmly believe this, friends, if we can remember that God, God is above all, and that we put our trust in God, and we do the best we can with our elected officials. We elect who we firmly believe is going to do a good job, and we remember to see everybody and their opinions as theirs and as people and not objects. We will see so much more in this world. We will see greater things in this world. We will stop. We will decrease the divisions And we will come together better. Me and my family don't agree politically. I will go ahead and tell you that right now. We just don't. And that's okay. Because as long as they understand that I'm doing what I believe is best, based off what my heart is telling me, what I feel God telling me in my heart, and as long as they know that I will love them and I understand, and I will try to understand where they're coming from so that way I can help myself relate to them and to understand how they're feeling because their feelings are so important. Then we have these beautiful relationships being formed. It can become contentious, yes, but what relationship isn't? I've never known a good marriage to never have any kind of contention. I've never known any kind of relationship or organizational relationship to not have some sort of conflict. Conflict is good. It helps us understand and helps us grow. So friends, remember God is king. God is the ruler of all. Elected officials come and go, but we have a God that loves us greater than anybody could ever love us. And that my friends, is something that we can be happy about today. 
It is something that can bring us together today if we are willing and able to think that way. Go in peace this day. Serve the Lord always, and thanks be to God.